Hello there, it's that time of the week where we go through all the latest news from Azeroth. While there has been a little less going on this week compared to the last, Blizzard still did manage to pull something major out of the bag to keep us busy. That big news is the announcement that Dragonflight Season 4 will be launching on April the 23rd on North American servers and the 24th on the European servers. The new season will see a return to the eight original Dragonflight dungeons from Mythic Plus, the three main Dragonflight raids being on a rotation where they will drop increased rewards in return for an increased difficulty, a new PvP season and improved item levels for open world drops. I'll be doing a full preview video on Season 4 in a couple of weeks when we get some more info from the PTR, but for an early summary, here's a link to last week's news episode where I run through all of it in a little bit more detail. Season 4 will be a little bit different to other seasons as it's not being accompanied by a major patch release. This means that the usual one week off season will not be happening, with the deadline for the prestige titles being 10pm the day before the new season launches in your region. Now, we don't have a massive amount of info on the logistics of the season handover from Blizzard, but they have now confirmed that the embodiment of Shadowflame, which is the ahead of the curve dragon riding skin for the renewed Proto Drake, will be going away at the end of Season 3 along with the other seasonal titles. So if you're chasing that mount or any of the other titles or achievements, you'll want to make sure you get them done before the 23rd. This announcement comes with another interesting implication, which is that in the 2024 Dragonflight roadmap, the alpha for the War Within was placed between the launch of 10 to 6 and the start of Season 4. Now this will imply that we could expect to see the launch of the first alpha sometime in the next two weeks or so. Now one word of warning is that the launch of the Cataclysm beta release was a little later than the original classic roadmap suggests, so the exact relationship with the alpha and betas and the live game releases is probably not written in stone. So it is possible the alpha may be a little bit later, especially as there's no word yet on signups for either the alpha or the betas. That all said, I personally do think that this is something that we're going to see dropping very soon now. The launch of the alpha, as well as being the first public step towards the War Within releasing, is also the point at which we can expect to see a lot more detailed information about the new expansion emerging. I will be here to cover all of this as it comes out, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you get notified whenever my videos go live. But don't worry, I will always clearly signpost spoilers and I personally won't be covering anything storyline related pre-release. Back at the start of the year, I did a video where I speculated about the possible timing of the various patches and the likely release timing for The War Within. While patch 1026 has been a little later than expected, the timing of Season 4 puts that speculation back on track. I'm going to put a link to the video on screen now for in case you're interested, and I'll also put a link in the comments down below if you want to see it later. But what about you? Are you excited for Alpha and Beta? Is this the time where you try to avoid all possible coverage? Do let me know in the comments below. The other big news this week was the launch of Phase 3 of Classic Season of Discovery, which happened on Thursday. In advance of that, Blizzard did provide a detailed update on the new PvE event, Nightmare Incursions. This is basically outdoor content, which starts with a quest outside each of the dream portals, which are in Ashenvale, Duskwood, Feralus, and the Hinterlands. These quests ask you to take on new demon enemies that have taken up residence at the portals, which is followed by an objective to go into the portal to slay targets, gather resources, or defeat a boss. The team say that these are designed to be a lot more old school in nature and be closer to the scenario and hold field duty missions that were in Silithus back in the original vanilla rather than the more for modern form that we see in the live game today. The different portals have different level requirements with the Duskwood one starting as low as level 25 and while some of the objectives can be soloed, many of them will require to three to five man groups. Now at the time I recorded this video, which was about 12 hours after launch, I've seen a lot of the classic folks reporting that the new events are very fast for levelling, which I think is actually great news, as the slow levelling speed was something that was reported as an issue in Phase 2. 
Moving on to the current live game and Mythic Raiders have benefited from some pretty sizable nerfs on both Tindril, Sage Swift and Farak. These nerfs will be very welcome I think as the relatively low number of guilds who have defeated these bosses has been getting a bit of attention in the community of late. Despite these nerfs, I do suspect that overall this season is going to end with a lower kill count on Mythic, which is kind of surprising given that in Shadowlands, the Sepulchre raid was acknowledged by Blizzard to have been somewhat overcooked, and even Blizzard expressed a desire to back away from such punishing raids. With the recent success of Mythic Plus, I have a suspicion that Blizzard will be wanting to take a look at how they approach Mythic raiding in The War Within, especially given the overall feeling in the community that it's kinda on a bit of a long, slow decline at the moment. This week also saw the launch of an updated Noble Garden event. The changes are not as extensive as were the case for the Lovers in the Air revamp in February, but we did get a new open world rare that awards a new transmog set and a cool flying carpet mount. The drop rate of this mount, which was originally estimated at just 1%, led to a fair bit of feedback given it's only obtainable for a single week every year. Blizzard did respond to this feedback by hotfixing it to increase the drop rate and to apply the system used with the other events where the first attempt of the day gets an even higher chance. With no word on what these drop rates are, it's hard to say if this has met the community concerns, but the issue of how to manage rewards for limited time events does still seem to be a bit of a trouble spot for both the devs and the community. I'm personally surprised that we're not seeing these higher drop rates become the default for the new event like this and that we still need to provide feedback to get them increased. Now, I managed to get the amount to drop for me today. I'm not sure if that's just thanks to the drop rates or just me being super lucky, but hopefully those of you who are working on it will get it to drop before the event ends. Noble Garden ends at 10 a.m. server time on the 8th, so if you haven't paid a visit so far, you will need to be quick about it if you want a chance at the new mount. Last week, I reported an issues with the Primal Storms events, which are part of the new A World Awoken meta achievement and how the events appear to have become very sticky to a single zone, which is an issue given that you need to complete four different types of storms in each of the four main zones. With the reset this week, Blizzard has switched the storms to spawn at a rate of two at a time, which was actually the originally the case prior to 1007, and I've also reported that they've hotfixed them to have a more even distribution pattern. I certainly have seen more diversity in the zones, and this has helped me to get a few more of them in, but as of recording, I still frustratingly have two of them to do. One of the irritating things about this at this stage is that feeling of having to check in whenever events are due to go live only to be disappointed and it's become by far the most annoying part of the meta for me. Now, one thing to be aware of of these events is that I've noticed that a couple of the times one of the Thuldrasa's events has spawned inside the Primalist future. And when that happens, the event doesn't actually show up in the main map. So if you're looking for a Thuldrasa's event and you notice at one point that there's perhaps only one event happening in the Isles, it might be worth dropping down in there to see if the missing second event is inside the future. One final piece of news before I move on to the PTR watch. In a recent IGN interview with John Height, who's SVP of the Warcraft franchise, John confirmed that while Blizzard do use machine learning based AI techniques for things like armor fitting, he's very opposed to the use of generative AI, think chat GPT type stuff, in the franchise. This is very welcome as while generative AI has a lot of potential, it also has a lot of moral and quality issues and in my opinion isn't really mature enough for the current corporate gold rush that seems to be surrounding the technology. I personally also would very much prefer my video games and my video game art to have that human touch. The interview series also touched on the idea of a Warcraft movie and it seems that that's not currently on the cards as John wants the team to focus more on the core of making video games but he has left the door open by saying that if he could find the right partner to make a movie he would be open to it. Now, I'll put links to both of those sections of the interviews down below. Moving over to PTR Watch, which is where I cover all the new news and discoveries from the PTRs, alphas and betas, and it's been a very quiet week this week. 
Blizzard have announced a fresh round of Mythic Plus testing and with that a fresh bunch of nerfs to Mythic Plus dungeons for Alderman, Ruby Life Pool and Algathar Academy. These will be very welcome but I personally like to have seen a little bit more for Ruby Life Pools but especially the Kokia Blaze Proof and Karaka Encounters. While the Ruby Life Pools have become a bit of a fan favourite in Mythic Zero for dungeon event quests, in my experience for mainstream and higher keys this was a very punishing dungeon for healers. This dungeon has a lot of a potential to be up there with Algathar and the post-nerf halls of infusions as one of the great dungeons of the season, but I feel like it's likely to be held back a bit by those two fights at the moment. Hopefully we will continue to see more attention to the Mythic Plus dungeons as testing proceeds. It's been quite interesting to me the extent to which Mythic Plus seems to be dominating the current testing schedule. Well that's all for this week, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button please head down below and do it now. Subscribing is by far the best way to support new channels like mine and if you've enjoyed this video please do let both me and YouTube know by smashing that like icon. That's all for now and I will see you all again soon.